good Tuesday morning to you. Today is uh, Tuesday, July the 27th, and we're going to be concluding the book of Habakkuk this morning, uh, all of chapter 3, and not sure where I'm going tomorrow morning. Uh, just, uh, we'll see, but uh, wherever my quiet time brings me tomorrow morning, whatever book, uh, then we will start in that book tomorrow. Um, good morning, Miss Vicki. Are you tired from being <laughs> at Salty Rehearsal? Sandy. Uh, the kids are working hard as well as the adults in preparing, uh, well, going through the music camp this week and they're learning God's word and uh, looking forward to seeing that Sunday morning. It will be an encouragement to everybody and so encourage you to, to be here Sunday morning, bring somebody with you. Um, it'll be a good day and those who pre-purchase tickets will be able to eat their varsity lunch on the grounds. There'll be no small groups at 1115 this Sunday and so just kind of have a family day. Looking forward to that. I want to remind you to pray for Benny Petreska this morning. His chest surgery will be this afternoon, I believe at 5 p.m. And so let's pray for him and pray for Leah and uh, continue to pray for Constantine as he's battling cancer and just lift up the whole family. We love that family and just uh, really pray for them. They've really been a testimony and a witness to all of us as they've gone through um, boy, just the last nine months or so of, of this um, this illness in their home. So, but this morning, I, <clears throat> when I was reading chapter three, I couldn't help but uh, think of this old hymn written by Fanny Crosby, um, entitled "Keep Me Near the Cross" or "Near the Cross." Some of us may know it as. And um, so, just meditate or sing along with me on this, and make it a prayer this morning. Jesus keep me near the cross, near a precious fountain, free to all the healing stream, flows from
Apostle Paul said that he uh, boasts in the cross. For in the cross, the power of God is made known. Isn't that, isn't that an amazing thing? Um, we see his power displayed in all of creation. Um, but to really see his power displayed, we see it in the shame of the cross. That's something to ponder and think about. Well, Habakkuk um, had cried out to God and he had was crying out about the wickedness in his own city and his own nation, the southern kingdom of Israel. And God had heard his prayer and God had given him the response that Habakkuk did not expect. God uh, made it clear, yes, I'm, I'm going to judge. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to show myself. But I'm going to do it in a fashion that, that you're not expecting, Habakkuk. I'm going to use the wicked Chaldeans, the Babylonians, to judge my people, my anointed ones, the ones that I've called as my nation. Habakkuk was disturbed by that and had the question, God, how in the world would you use a, a nation more wicked than us, the unrighteous? How and why would you use the unrighteous to judge your people? And God made it clear that um, that he is going to do that, and, and God's means and his ways are, are beyond our understanding and finding out. But then God said, you know, I, I'm going to use that wicked nation, but, but, but bear mind, Habakkuk, after I've done that, I'm going to then bring judgment on the nation of Babylon. And, of course, as we saw yes, or said yesterday, we see that in the history of Israel. They're taken captive into Babylon for 70 years, and then God does judge Babylon, judges the nation. And when I look at chapter 3, I realize that the thing that Habakkuk had done and all of this stress over the situation, the same thing that, that you and I do when we face any kind of crisis or situation, we, we first cry out, we ask God questions, we ponder the why and the how and all of that. And then God really speaks to us clearly uh, through his word and also into our heart by the Holy Spirit that he is a sovereign God and he's a holy God. And our place needs to be that we rest and find comfort in the will of God. And sometimes the will of God is not what we would want that to be. But we have to recognize that God is an all-knowing God. God is an all-seeing God. God is omniscient. He is all-powerful. He knows far more than we do. And so here in chapter 3, Habakkuk rests in the sovereignty of God. And he responds to God in a prayer. Um, it's actually a psalm. We find that in the last verse of chapter 3 that, that Habakkuk had given it to the music master and it was believed that uh, this was probably used as a song or a psalm in ancient Israel. And so Habakkuk begins by, by saying this, that, Lord, I have heard of your fame. God, I know of your fame. I know of your splendor. And I stand in awe of your deeds. We need to stop occasionally and just stand in awe of the deeds of God. His mighty work, first of all, in saving us, that we were a wretch, and that God, in his mighty ways and mighty deeds, he saved us. I was having a time of conversation with somebody yesterday who's a believer, and we were we were rec recollecting our time when we came to know Christ, how God saved us. And, and both of us were individuals that you might have looked at and said, they're the unsavable. But God in his mercy reached down and drew us both and saved us, not of any accord, not of any reason of our own merit, but God in his grace and his mercy saved us. And so he says, I stand in awe of your deeds. Renew in our day in our time and make them known. And here's, here's a key phrase, in wrath, remember mercy. I find it interesting that Habakkuk would, would cry out to God for his enemies, for the Chaldeans, for the Babylonians, that God was going to bring wrath. But he says, God, in your wrath, remember mercy. This is one of the characteristics of God, that he's a merciful God that he's a loving, kind God, although he is just and he has to exercise judgment against sin, and one day he will judge the world. 
but we see in that judgment, even as we look particularly in the revelation of John, that in God's judgment, in his wrath, there's always mercy. Thank God for his mercy in the midst of wrath. I was struck this morning by that idea of Habakkuk praying to God, asking God to have mercy on his enemies. And um, as, as I pray for our nation uh, on almost a daily basis, I recognize that there are those uh, within our nation who, who want to do evil, who, want, who, who are promoting uh, Marxist ideology, etc., progressivism. And oftentimes I pray uh, those purgatory kind of prayers of asking God to, to bring them down and uh, that God would have mercy. And um, it was a reminder to me that even those that I would perceive as enemy, God has created them in his image and God desires that none should perish but all come to eternal life. And so our prayer in that sense as Christ followers should be and needs to be, God, remember mercy in the midst of your wrath. And he goes on to describe the judgment of God that he sees is coming in the rest of, of chapter 3. And I'm not going to take the time to read through all of these verses. I'd encourage you to look at that. But it's a description of, of how God's wrath is going to be poured out. And after he prays all of this, uh, describes all of this, in verse 17 I think is the key to the chapter, really the key to the whole book. Um, Habakkuk steps back, and again, he's recognizing the awe and the splendor of God. And in God's goodness, yet God remains good even in times that do not seem so good. In verse 17, he says this. He says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive cup fails and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in my God and Savior. And what Habakkuk is saying is, even if everything is taken away, even if I lose everything that I have, even if the, the nation is demolished, yet I will still praise the Lord. And, and that's, the, that's the solace and the peace that we have. We've all gone through traumatic events in our life, or most of us have at some point or another. But it's only by God's grace and his mercy that in the midst of those, we are still able to rejoice in God and give him glory. And so the, the lesson in that for us is whether it's good or bad, whether we're on a mountaintop or whether we're in the valley, God is still God, and he is still a holy, loving, just, gracious, merciful God. And yet, while I praise him, is what Habakkuk says. There's another verse in Scripture, and I can't remember the passage. Though the heavens pass away, though the mountains be removed, though the stars all fade from view, I'll not be shaken, for I trust in you. And that's a question for us. Do, do we, do, are we willing to trust God regardless of what circumstances are around us? Yesterday, I think it was, I received a text from Leah Petresca in light of Constantine's uh, cancer and Benny now having this serious surgery today. And I loved what she said in the text, and I'm going to paraphrase what she said, that even though all of this stuff is happening, she and her family recognizes that God is a good God and God's a loving God. And God has a plan and God has a purpose in all of this. And that's really the attitude we should have. Um, and, you know, I recognize that when we're able to have that kind of attitude and that kind of mindset, that is really the grace of God in our lives. He concludes in verse 19 by recognizing again the sovereignty of God. He says, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on heights for the director of music on a stringed instrument. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the high places. The sovereign God, the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-hearing, sovereign God. God has a plan for your life and my life. And even in the midst of trial, um, his plan cannot be thwarted. 
Well, I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you today. Let's pray today that God gives us an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart, maybe to encourage somebody uh, through Habakkuk's prayer here, uh, that God is a sovereign God, and though uh, there be no grapes on the vine, no, no figs on the tree, no sheep in the pen, uh, that God is a merciful and a loving God that will praise him anyway. Pray that God gives you an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel. Pray that God would make us wise to recognize and to see when a seed of the gospel has been planted in somebody's heart and we might be able to cultivate that seed that's been sown. And we pray that by God's grace, we'd be able to witness somebody be saved by him today. Wouldn't that be great today? I pray the Lord's blessings on you, that he keep you, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Pray for each other. I love you. God bless you.